One of the biggest insights I got when I first read the book Lean Analytics was that data analysis helps us to uncover different information from customers' behavior. There are so-called known unknowns or those things that now we are aware that we don't know, for example how recent and how frequent the customers are, but there are also unknown unknowns. These are things we are not aware we don't know, so we are missing out. In this video I'm going to show you how artificial intelligence can be used to uncover this information from customer service survey data, web page visitors, and CRM databases. By doing this, you will not only be able to optimize communication with your existing customers, but you will also be able to identify characteristics, interests, preferences of your power users. Then you can target potential power users with awareness campaigns at the top of your marketing funnel. Hi, I'm Judith from Growth Tribe with another video about AI. Imagine you offer some type of consulting or advice to your new customers, for example, which software subscription is the best for their business purposes or which clothes to buy based on their style and needs. Let's take this example a bit further with a practical use case. Consider a company selling clothes for men in the form of a subscription model. They can sign up to receive mystery boxes, packages with pre-selected clothing items. When they arrive to your website, you can design an onboarding process Process, for example, some type of survey to map out their needs better. You ask your new customers to respond to a 10 item questionnaire in which they provide you yes or no answers, for instance, how, when, and why they will be using your product. The business as usual situation would be to collect this data customer by customer, then give these answers to a specialist to inspect them. Then the specialist, a marketeer, a business developer, or a UX designer, would try to use their human judgment and domain expertise to infer patterns from this data. But even a small questionnaire like this with 10 items can generate thousands or if not millions of different combinations of answers. It is impossible for a human to memorize and identify patterns from data of this kind. It becomes a typical case of artificial narrow intelligence. These algorithms are in the domain of unsupervised learning that mathematically measure how similar or dissimilar are the user's responses. These are the so-called clustering algorithms in which the k-means and the hierarchical clustering are classified examples. Instead of giving the responses of new users to a human specialist to decide which cluster the new user belongs to, you can send this information first to a clustering algorithm. The algorithm could spot that you have three or four latent segments of customers based on the type of clothes they would like to buy for work or for socializing. For example, that you have two groups who buy clothes for work. One is composed of C-level corporate executives who seek for quality and convenience of delivery. Another group is composed by hipsters who want to try new top brands. You just uncovered the unknown unknowns. By uncovering these data insights from the clustering model, you will probably increase your uplifts and return on advertising spend. Now you are going to use this information to create a lookalike audience on Facebook, Instagram or Google Ads to reach out to similar users with awareness campaigns. You should also adjust existing communication with your current customers according to their cluster labels. It is up to you as a skilled professional to come up with messaging and image retail to that segment instead of just relying on the generic ads you spread to everyone. Everything goes back to experimentation. Just be careful. Providing personalized content without sounding too creepy and invading privacy can be a challenging task. For the hipsters, an ad with an avocado matcha latte could be a good start. So we started with an example of survey data collected during the onboarding, but you can do the same process with top of the funnel data, for example, which URLs, which sections they are visiting, how many blog articles they are reading, how frequently they are visiting and for how long they stay on the website. You can also do the same thing with retained customers using a CRM database. For this, try to start collecting data from what we call the first order features for clustering, which are recency, frequency and monetary value and customer tenure. These come from the very classic marketing framework, the RFM model. Let's take a look at another use case. Consider a website where registered users can donate to different crowdfunding projects. In this case, you can measure recency with the last date of donation or the last time they logged into the website. Frequency can be the number of sessions on the website, the number of different projects they donated to or any feature that reflects level of engagement. Last, the monetary factor can be measured with the total amount donated. Then you should add second order features like customer preference References. This is usually based on which products or type of service they interact with. This might reveal real unknown factors, for example, if you donate to a photographer, you might also donate to a contemporary painter, but never to a classical pianist. 
Finally, you can also inspect how sociodemographic characteristics, for example age or gender, vary within and between each cluster. Typically, running a clustering algorithm is the first pilot project we advise companies to start with. They are the low-hanging fruit of machine learning in business, mature, informative, easy to implement and interpret. They can create a positive momentum for you and for your company to acquire the taste for using more artificial intelligence to improve your products and services. After that, you will probably want to go deeper in the analysis and use other machine learning techniques that can, for example, uncover the personality and the mindsets of your typical customers. This would even lead to an even better personalization, but let's leave that for another video. Hope you are now eager to uncover some of these unknown unknowns in your business model. Please leave your comments and questions below and see you next time.